Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to get straight to the point, right? We're not going to, we're not going to give you any flannel. I'm just going to come straight out with it, right? Is Eddie Hearn Rambo? I'm telling you he is. He is bigger than life. People can say, yeah, you stick it to Eddie and Russ, don't you? Yeah, I do. But, I went through his stable last night and... Oh. I went through his stable last night and I had what's known as a chart. And I looked how they do it, how, how, how they work things at match room. He's going for world dominance, isn't he? And I think that what you've got to do, you've got to give somebody respect like that because he's selling himself, isn't he? And this is a point that I've tried to make to, uh, to Dennis, who I work with, my mentor. You could say he's like a mentor, he's like a big brother, he's a mate, we've had his ups and downs, screaming matches mainly on my part, because he's cool as a cucumber, Dennis, isn't he? He has the motto, scheme, not scream. Whereas I scream. And then after I think, oh, I try and get out of the mess. But Eddie Hearn sells himself, doesn't he? Right? He'll go around and work the room, he'll shake as many people's hands as he can, like Dave Allen. And then you become attached to that person, don't you? No matter how that person performs as a fighter, or a promoter, because you've met them, you feel like you want to follow them. Oh, I've met him. Shook my hand. Nice guy. I'm going to watch his show. He might be crap. And this is how they've worked it, haven't they? This is how they've worked these events that they do. They do events, don't they? You can't tell me that Anthony Fowler, who was nearly 28, against Brian Rose, who's God knows how old, the both of them's average age is over 30, right? Headline act on Sky, non-pay-per-view, other night. How is that next gen? How is it next gen? I don't know. I don't know. Fowler, for my opinion, in my opinion, he went too long in amateurs because they're on the gravy train, aren't they, in the amateurs? When you're in amateurs, right? It's a conveyor belt of everything, isn't it? 500 pound a week. Mercedes car, flat up there in Sheffield, student games flat or whatever, whatever they're giving them away. You get a card for your food, free insurance, free petrol. All facilities at EIS, don't forget it's the building where Olympic, every Olympic athlete trains. Flown all over the world, people, you know, giving you tracksuits. It's just freebies all the way. Joe Joyce, stayed too long. Anthony Fowler, stayed too long. Fraser Clark, he's 28 in August, stayed too long. Or is he 27? You can outstay your welcome. Nicola Adams, stayed too long. She's just been given a WBO world title because their opponent's injured, so they've just handed at world title. It's not the first time that's happened to a Frank Warren fighter, and it won't be the last. Point I'm trying to make is this. They stay too long in amateurs. Now that show that Eddie's just put on at weekend was a shocker. But because he's a promoter and everybody's backing him, he's number one, isn't he? You'll watch it because you want to watch Eddie. It's becoming about Eddie. Eddie Earn is Rambo. He is big. He is number one. He's the number one world boxing promoter at the moment. He could sell Santa Arabs. Now, I'm a former businessman as regards double glazing, right, it's what I was involved in years ago, ask anybody, Google ledger frames, I, that were mine originally, obviously the kid who's got it now, he's gone on and done, but great things with it, 
and I don't bear grudges but the bottom line is this me personally I see where Eddie Earns coming from I see it right he's selling himself now I've just wrote a few things down here we're talking about a guy here who's he rides out storms he sees off wannabe gangsters he kills off old school promoters then he's them going back to him cap in hand he kills off old school promoters he killed off Mick Hennessy hadn't he he took Darren Barker he took Carl Froch he nearly took Tyson Fury he's got you he and now I know Mick's still involved but seeing Mick Hennessy do the right thing for his fighter I'm pleased for because I like Mick and I class him as a pal but how do you think Mick Hennessy felt sat there at the end of that table you look you've got Eddie Hearn there with air plugs and teeth done looking the business in a Tom Ford, Tom Ford suit you know he's got L'Oreal uh, face cream on and then you've got Mick Hennessy there in an XXXL what the hell Ralph Lauren shirt he's a big lad in him Mick he likes his food Mick sat at and he didn't say much did he Peter's in middle he's sort of between them isn't he he wants best for Yui Mick probably wants best for Yui but Mick wouldn't have wanted to work with Eddie I know Mick but where do you go if it's only game in town where are you going to go they want what's best for the fighter Mick's built Yui up and that's maybe where Mick might go now I mean he's built him up and then Eddie's took him it's like having a footballer in it and playing for crew and then Man United coming in for for, uh, for fighter in it. It's what happens, isn't it? It's uh, it's a part of boxing that I don't agree with. But I think Mick Hennessy, and I've said this for years, he's probably the best in the country at finding talent. He does all amateur shows. Mick Hennessy finds talent. You back turned pro with him. Carl Froch, Tyson Fury, Huey Fury, they all turn pro with Mick Hennessy, Darren Barker turned pro with him, but Mick takes them to a world title or gets them in that position to go for a world title and I don't know what, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's a platform problem or what, but something seems to happen where Mick doesn't connect with social media, I don't think he does, even though they've got a few followers on Hennessy Sports, I don't think the fans get him and he's a great boxing guy now I don't think the fans get Den I don't think they get him if they did well, our shows would be selling out wouldn't they we'd have more fighters than what we've got but speaking honestly I'm probably going to get sacked tomorrow or a bollocking excuse my English but we've got a boxing's going in a direction now I've noticed in my 52 month doing this every day I've noticed it's going in a direction now where belts don't really mean anything. I don't even see belts being important in future. If Al Heyman fighter Ruiz comes out and says, oh, I'm just going to get rid of all belts, split them all up. Right, they're not going to do that. But if they did, he's the guy who beat Joshua, so he'd still be a big pay-per-view star. So belts are not really important. And these sanctioning bodies, they know that. That's why they're bending over backwards. I mean, if the rumours are true that they're going to bring a PBC belt out, I'm all for it. They've already stopped working with WBO. But the moral of the story is this. Eddie Hearn is the best promoter in world boxing at the moment. Don King, is, he's gone. He's finished. He's hanging on for dear life. Bob Arum, he ain't got much left, long left, has he? But then again, I, I, I remember years ago uh, Barry Hearn saying he can't have long, long left Bob Arum. He's still going strong in it, but he's not going to be around forever, is he? And it's like when Man United had Alex Ferguson when he went, the old stack of cards came tumbling down. That's what happened with top rank. But like I said, Eddie Hearn, he's the number one guy. He terrorises commissions, you know, drug agencies. He manipulates every situation. He's got the platforms. Nobody dare go against the grain. There's only me and, a, and World Breaker F and Ultra Tech Sports Raw and a couple of us that are doing the job properly and saying it as we see it. If Eddie Hearn puts a good show on, brilliant. The show with Yui Fury on, that's a good show. They didn't need to put Yui Povetkin on. They could have got away with Lomachenko and Luke Campbell. We'd have all moaned, but we'd have all watched it. 
with you Ian Povetkin on that's a great show that now so Eddie Hearn well done <laughs> but it's just how boxing's going isn't it I mean there's a few other things I've jotted down here he's got the platform Coogan Cassius you know is Coogan Cassius ever going to ask Eddie Hearn any real questions pay-per-view will he ask him that I mean we're talking about a kid here that's very patient he's very good at his job He's very comfortable in front of the camera, Coogan. He don't get excited. Like me, I all get revved up and that because I'm emotional. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Coogan's a bit laid back. He's quite cool, actually. Uh, I think he's very good. But I also know that there's some things that he can't ask him. I've, I have spoke to Coogan a few times. I spoke to him in a club in Bulgaria, me and Dennis. We sat down, we had a chat. And... He said he could get me an interview with Eddie Hearn. I said, yeah, get it then. But he ain't got it. So, Coogan, remember what you said where you said you could get me an interview with Eddie Hearn? Get me it, whether it's on phone or I have to go to one of his shows. But I don't want to go there and sit there an hour waiting and be mugged off because that's what Eddie will do because that's what he's like. He's got a memory like an elephant, just like his dad. They haven't forgot the day when Ricky Hatton signed with Dennis Hobson when he was on the way to sign with Barry Hearn. And obviously the even score when they took Jamie McDonald, didn't they? That's just boxing, isn't it? That's boxing. But Ricky never had a contract with Warren no more. Jamie had one with Dennis. But that's another story. But is Eddie Hearn Rambo? Yes, he is. He's big, he's number one. Uh, you know, he's bouncing about in a Tom Ford suit, smiling to everybody, shakes everybody's hands, all while eating a, a packet of pickled onion monster munch. He's the cheeky chappy routine, he's got it down to a T. They've got the conveyor belt at the EIS, they've got Sky Platform, and he's got all these social media people like Coogan, who were on payroll, don't forget. He was getting paid every week, 500 quid, because Eddie saw the potential. They both helped each other when they started out. He's got Coogan, he's got Michelle Phelps there, she piggybacked onto Coogan to get into that circle. This is how it does, people are brain thieves. This is how they manipulate the system. He's got that Rob Tebbett there. He's got him with Boxing Social. I were offered that job. I were offered that job before they started Boxing Social. So I know owner very well. Now I said, no, I've got, I can't work a computer. And I wouldn't have done it anyway. I wouldn't have been running up and down country, kissing people's rear ends. That's not me. So I've always been a renegade, I've been my own man all my life. But uh, for some I don't like, that's it. I, I, I couldn't do what he does, Rob Tebbett. He is good at his job, but is he asking real questions? Has anybody said to Eddie Hearn, Eddie, why did you put pay-per-view up, up to 20 quid? He'll go, well, well, fighters want to get paid. I say, yeah, but why don't you just stick to your guns and keep it at 15 quid? 15 quid, 17 quid. Did you know they tried for 17 pound 50? And Sky said no. So they kept it at 17. It's 20 quid now. And they're even talking about £25 for Joshua Ruiz. How's about that? 25 quid. Because it's going to be a stacked card. But it is what it is, isn't it? But, well, like I said, he's big. He's number one. He's just signed Yui Fury. Savannah Marshall. I'm not saying much else on that one. Uh, no doubt Billy Joe Saunders is probably going to go there Billy Joe Saunders hadn't been able to get the fights with Frank who has he really fought since he beat one title off Andy Lee he's beat Andy Lee and Lemieux they've not built on the Lemieux win he took Lemieux to school and gave him a diploma <laughs> did you watch that fight? masterful boxer millionaire Jack the lad, but is, is Billy Joe Saunders dedicated or does he want it anymore? Does he beat Canelo if the Billy Joe Saunders turns up who fought Lemieux? Yes, he beats Canelo. Does he beat Golovkin? Yes, because Golovkin is 38 now, is he? Or around about that. Does he beat Jacobs? Wipes floor with him. Does he beat Callum Smith? Yes, he beats Callum Smith at 168, but I've heard they might want it at 165. 
So if Callum Smith does the weight easy, like they keep saying, come down three more pound. But it is what it is. He might get the fight now. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing talk of a two-fight deal with Callum Smith. So, but there's no sign. MTK have obviously got it over the line. So good luck to Billy. I like it. I like Billy Joe Saunders as a fighter. Uh, I don't know him. I met him once at Sheffield. Uh, Sheffield United's ground. There's a shop. There's a place next door, isn't there? And Ryan had a show there, Ryan Rhodes. I met him there. Seems alright, but I think he's a world class fighter. Uh, but like I said, Eddie Earn, he is running boxing at the moment. This with the Dillian White situation, he's manipulated that. The, the, they're just doing what they want, they're playing everybody. Gareth, look. Look, you've got to understand that right? boxing is a sport like no other. It's a sport like no other. Now, Gareth A. Davis, people like that. Coogan, Michelle Phelps, Rob Tebbett. They're not going to ask certain questions like what I'd ask. They're not going to mention pay-per-view. Hardly anybody mentions Stubbub now. They rode the storm out. Remember at the beginning when I went, mentioned about storms? They ride everything out. Eddie rides storms. He drives that motorway in his Rolls Royce EH79. Drives that motorway. Goes home. Gets in his Georgian mansion. Four million quid's worth. Is Eddie bothered about what people think? No. Is he bothered that Peter Fury put an interview out on IFL over, some, over the Parker fight with Huey where Eddie told Parker they haven't got no money. Come and fight on Sky. They've got no money. Now, Mick Hennessy and Peter Fury had to pull money up, up front, for Parker. How's about that? So Peter did an interview. He wasn't very impressed with Eddie, was he? I know what was said, so... Eddie's not bothered. He's surrounded by security. If you want to work with him, he'll work with you. He'll tell you, Eddie will tell you anything. Oh, you're my best friend. You're my new best friend. I, my fighters are my friends. Listen. How many fighters go to Eddie Hearn's house for, for Sunday dinner? How many? How many have been for Sunday dinner? That's what mates do, isn't it? So, but like I said, he's big, he's number one. Uh, so I'll tip, I'll tip my hat. I'll tip my hat off to you, Eddie. You're big, you're number one. You are John Rambo of Essex. I don't have to like Eddie, but I respect him and what he stands for in boxing. But I don't, I don't mean to say I have to like him. I don't like how he goes about his business. Uh, he goes about his business totally different to how Dennis goes about his business. See, Dennis is fortunate, he's a multimillionaire, but he's not got the platform, has he? With Free Sports TV and Porky's Corner. That's not, that's not the platform, is it? We're small fry, aren't we? We know what we are. Small halls. We're not putting shows on at small... To me, small halls are uh, your call. That's a small hall to me, your call. Because it's a hall, isn't it? Ponds Ford is an arena. Right? But people want to call it small hall. Call it small hall. But it's an arena. But Ponds Ford, Dennis Hobson, Ponds Ford, Free Sports TV and Porky's Corner is not... Eddie Hearn, Matchroom, O2 Arena, Sky Sports and IFL, is it? It's like that, isn't it? So, it's up to fans to get behind us. Now, all these people who keep saying to me they're hardcore boxing fans, they send me all these emails, tweet me. Brilliant. I love it. From the bottom of my heart. But how many of you have actually been to one of our shows in Sheffield? How many? Smack opposite train station. Come on, get your tickets bought. Get like in my channel and subscribe it and let's go. If we're going to be anti-establishment, I'm going to need your help. So come on. I ain't going to beg. But come on. Get behind us. When you see what, what we're trying to do, you'll understand. Alright? But let's, let's get supporting Free Sports TV. How many of you watch Free Sports? 
I'm not saying don't buy Sky, but how many watch free sports? And like I've just said, how many watch my channel have actually subscribed? How many have actually been to a show? There's a lot of people that don't go to any shows, they just have an opinion. Come on, we should be back in boxing. What Eddie Hearn's done for boxing and Joshua is fantastic. But the cake is not getting shared out down the line. Do you see where I'm coming from? It is not getting shared out down the line. Now, that's just, that's just how, how, how I feel about it. That's just how, how I feel about it. And I, and I want it to get shared amongst everybody. I want the cake to get shared amongst everybody because uh, it is what it is, isn't it? So, but, so, peace out, keep on trucking. Peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Uh, it's the best sport, it's the best sport in the world. Uh, what other sport can you watch where you can put Ward Gatty on round nine? Or Frotch Groves round six, you know the first fight, and the hair will stand. The hair will stand up on, on, on you. Or you, or you can watch that uh, Arturo Gatti documentary on HBO. Is it HBO? And tears will come in your eyes when they're telling you about how he died and all that. That's what boxing does to people like me. And and I and I, and I wonder if it does if it does that to you because if it doesn't. I don't class you as proper boxing people. I don't, honestly, that's just how I feel. Unless it's just, unless I, 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 I live it too much, I don't know. I don't know, Lou DeBellef, he's, he's of that opinion with me. Uh, he, he's just, he's the same Lou DeBellef as me. Uh, Denfield, same when he watches War Gatti or, you know, when, he, when Clinton Woods won a world title. Can you imagine if Josh Whale wins a title with Dennis? Because I were pestering and pestering to sign Josh Whale. Then let's sign Josh Whale, let's sign Josh Whale. Oh, well, we can't, he's with Steffi Bull. I say, it won't be forever, let's sign Josh Whale then. Let's just monitor the situation and we'll see. He said, well, we'll see. I kept on and on and on. Eventually, I got him and I got my name on contract. Not a lot of people know that, do they? Now, bottom line is this. Boxing is a sport like no other. I just can't explain what it means what it means for me to be doing this. It's fantastic to doing this and helping out behind the scenes, win Mick Wales gym tonight, bit of training, Glen Rose gym in a couple of days, go up there. I love it and I've give up a lot to get involved in this. This is why I want people to back my channel. If people could comprehend what exactly I have given up to do this, you will see. I, I am probably 40 grand a year worse off. Now, who's, who's willing to go do that? Somebody with a family willing to do that? I must be, am I crazy? I must be crazy. And, you know, I'm probably another couple of years, two or three years, That'll be it, I'll be what, 50, what am I, 49 in October? I could probably see me send bumming about age 52 in some old knackered Mondeo, living in a pigsty. <laughs> I won't be living in a pigsty, but this is what boxing does to you, it can take your soul, it can take all your money as well. But the sheer buzz, the sheer... I can't explain, like I said, when Josh Whale wins a belt, and he will win a belt at Christmas, I know how Steffi Bull felt now when Robbie Barrett won the British title. I can understand. I can understand how that lad felt. Because he's put his heart and soul into it. Don't like how he goes about his business sometimes. But people don't like how I go about my business. But it's boxing, in it? It is what it is, in it? So, alright. Like and subscribe. Uh, the reason I want you to subscribe is because I want you to back the channel. Plus, when a video comes out you get a notification, don't you? And you're not gonna miss it. You'll get your porky fix. So come on, get back in channel. All them people that send me horrible YouTube messages and that, deep, deep down, I'm gonna, you all like me and I'm gonna make you from haters, I'm gonna turn you from haters into lovers, all right? And some of you are not all bad. 
some of you have a go at me some days and then other days you say nice things so I take it with a pinch of salt but I do read all the comments a couple of times a week I go through them all and it's nice to see what you people want to want to talk about if you've got any ideas about what videos I should put out send the ideas in porkycorner at mail.com no capital letters porkycorner at mail.com alright peace out My name is Tony Bellew and I get my smile with Calm Dental.